Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, we're going to be doing something special where I'm going to have other genealogists react to Police Are Stealing Your DNA Testing Kits by Renegade Cut. Now, I was recently at the International Association of Jewish Genealogical Societies Conference in London, and while I was there, I thought this one video would be a perfect one to have a lot of my professional genetic genealogist friends react to. So they have a lot of experience in genealogy, in genetic genealogy, and many of them are doing a lot of leading studies and a lot of leading work in different aspects of genealogy and genetic genealogy. Basically, there's some pretty badass people. Now, unfortunately, these reactions were done in the middle of the conference and we couldn't really find a good place that was quiet to go and do these. So everywhere we found was the quietest place, but there was still a lot of people around and talking. And so there may be a lot of uh, extraneous noises that are in the reactions. Now that's all I'm gonna say for now, but let's go ahead and jump in and have my guests introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Randy Schoenberg. I do a ton of genealogy on Genie, and I love Jarrett Ross, the Genie vlogger. Me too. My name's Adam Brown, and I'm the director of the Albertino DNA Project and uh, the Genie curator, and I've been doing this for 30 years. My name is Michael Wass, uh, Palmer Wass Jewish Heritage Services. I am a Jew uh, historian of Jewish communities globally. I also do a lot of DNA work, so I am pleased to be here to uh, react to a video with the uh, Gen uh, Genia vlog. My name is Alec Ferretti, and I've been typecast as the guy that lectures about endogamy, but I really want to let that go to pursue my passion projects of yelling at the government and writing parody songs. And this is Alex Kalzareth, <laughs> and he spends his spare time collecting pogs, talking to old people, and avoiding <laughs> anybody else. DNA testing kits have exploded in popularity over the past several years. For a fee, you can spit into a tube, send it to a company like 23andMe, Ancestry DNA, or Family Tree DNA, and the company will reveal your genetic background in a pie chart. The pie chart tells you all about yourself, except that it really that doesn't. Chart. No, it estimates your ancestry through DNA markers and haplogroup. The pie chart tells you about your blood, but lists it through recognizable cultures. Italian, Scandinavian, etc. This pie chart means nothing, because blood is not culture. Culture is culture. Sort of true. Right? I've always said, like, the blood and the soil concept comes from the 19th century, it turns into Nazi stuff, but, you know, your blood isn't attached to soil. No, it's it's totally you know, nonsense. My, my grandparents came here not speaking a word of English, and uh, within f 10 years they were speaking fluent English, and they have fluent children and fluent grandchildren. Yeah, so and people move. It's, they move, and their expectations yeah. in life change. So, I don't know if it's culture they're talking about, but sort of ethnicities, I guess, is the word I would use. Well, that is correct, that we can't assign race, ethnicity, or anything, but this is already using bad terminology such as blood because this is not testing your blood. That pie chart that says you are 2% Mongolian does not mean you get to claim to be Mongolian. Claiming to be part of a distinct culture because of something that happened a thousand years ago on the other side of the planet and completely unknown to you until you saw a pie chart is something white people do to give their homogenous milk toast existence that little extra flavor that they desperately this desire. In South Park. There are legitimate reasons to trace your DNA. For example, your results could reveal predispositions to diseases, but these results can also be uncovered through medical practitioners that will be more comfortable confidential with your DNA sample than 23andMe. So, yes, 23andMe is problematic, but the other DNA companies are specifically not allowed to test the medical information unless you specifically consent to it. But these results can also be uncovered through medical practitioners that will be more confidential with your DNA sample you know, than 23andMe. You know, Kramer messed that up big time Seinfeld, so A DNA test it. kit might also help you find your birth parents but for everyone else, the goofy pie chart really is the main attraction. He loves saying pie Now that we understand chart. that the main reason that people use DNA testing kits is meaningless, we need to ask ourselves if it is worth it. I don't mean... Is this a real voice or is it AI? What do you think? I, I don't know. Because it's, it's like, it's he, he's got sort of no real emotion. Yeah, so no effect. Like, yeah, there's yeah. something going on there. Yeah. I don't entirely disagree with it. A DNA of his The voice. key to DNA testing is knowing in advance what it is you're trying to learn. Yeah. That the main reason that people use DNA testing kits is meaningless. We need to ask ourselves if it is worth it. I don't mean worth it because of the cost. I mean worth it because of the risks. 
I would never get my DNA I'm tested. Scared. Never have, oh, never will. Again, is this a computer saying they would never get their DNA tested or a person? What do you think? I don't know, but I, it doesn't sound like it was much of a loss. No. <laughs> the reason I would never use a DNA testing kit is that it's dangerous for all of us. DNA testing kit companies are complicit in violating our privacy, our bodily autonomy, by collaborating with local and federal law enforcement. Oh, right. I got news for you. First of all, the computer doesn't have DNA, but if it did have DNA, who cares, right? Well, and the second thing is, everyone already knows everything about you from your cousins who've already been DNA tested. I would say the only thing one would worry about with DNA testing is whether insurance companies will deny you insurance because of a pre-existing condition. That's the only thing I would be concerned about. On the other hand, if you have a pre-existing condition, wouldn't you like you and your family to know about it? Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. But but uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not agreeing with this part. As explained by Tania Simoncelli and Sheldon Krimsky in the book Genetic Justice, Data Banks, Criminal also, Investigations, and Civil voice. Liberties, <laughs> Although the notion that an employer or insurance company should abandon his the or point. her DNA, they have a right to collect it, analyze it, and perhaps use it as evidence against that person. My feeling is if I leave a Coke can behind a McDonald's, they should have a warrant if they want to get my DNA and they have no probable Isn't cause to collect it. I don't, think, I don't think the police should be going through the population collecting DNA samples. I, I, I think that's a bridge it's too far. Not, it's not private. Like it, it, Privacy is things you sort of traditionally kept private, like, you know, what sex position you like. Okay? That's private. Yeah, but it's an okay? ex... But, but like, what your DNA is, like, no one's even... No one cares about it. Who cares? Well, Who cares what your haplogroup group is? No one. Like, the issue is, like, are you a criminal or not? Well, we're, I don't think really okay. this question of haplogroup group is question out whether or not the government has the right to build a database without your knowing about it. I mean, that's of course they have a right to build a database. Why not? I mean, they already have a census. In Europe, by the way, everybody has to register with the police when they move into a, a new home. Was that before the Gestapo or after the that's, Gestapo? That's what it ha happens in Europe. In, in the U.S., we don't do that. But, but uh, no, I don't have a problem. Listen, these, these are people who think they can hide, okay? You can hide, right? You can hide your DNA. You can hide from the police. You can commit crimes and hide. The fact is, you can't hide. Well, and people should know that. I'm just thinking about the slippery slope aspect of it, that the police think that they can start to go around collecting information about the public without there being any cause. That gives me a problem. Yeah, but it's not... Inf it's There's a difference between collecting a specific target's information and having sort of a general database full of information that you can use when you get a specific target. Well, I like the specific target idea, which is that you, you go after them when you have cause. Yeah, but when you have cause, then you compare it to the database. But the, well, just having a database doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't hurt anybody's privacy. No one's using it for that um, until they have cause to use it. Anyway, let's see what he says. Appears to be operating under a different set of principles than that of health or employment. The police cannot simply demand that you submit your DNA under all circumstances as there are some legal protections. One way is this. Anything that is deemed abandoned and or in a public place is no longer your property. Police abuse this dictate by offering suspects a cold beverage during interrogation. What does this After have to do with After drinking it, DNA the suspect testing. has probably left <laughs> in DNA terms of, from uh, their mouth consumer on the gifts. can. All I know is that this guy Once has in fact watched at least two episodes of SVU. The law <laughs> says that it is abandoned and that anything found on it is fair game. So what do law enforcement agencies do with our DNA besides trying to link us to crimes? They create databases full of our most private genetic information. CODIS is the Combined DNA Index System. It's maintained by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The issue I'm is sure, our, I'm our, sure we're in there, by the way. Yeah, but our, our DNA isn't our most private. Like, we share it with our parents. We share it with our siblings. It's not private. Like, it's not... That's why they can find people, No, right? the private stuff are what books I read and what, yeah. and what newspapers and what articles I read. Yeah. And guess what? They know all of that. <laughs> that out from the public library. Yes, sir. No, but they from, just, from from just by what from Amazon or Google. Yeah. But it's more complicated than that. There are local DNA databases where police departments input DNA samples that they stole from your garbage can and other sources. There are state DNA index systems that share information among the local databases and the national DNA index system that shares information among the states. Combined, it's called the CODIS, and it's terrifying even if you have no reason to think that the police Is are after dumb? you. 
things called the CODIS, and it's terrifying even if you have no reason to think that the police are after you. I'm so not terrified. The whole idea of, of our right against unreasonable searches and seizures is that it's, it's disruptive, it, it's intrusive, right? If someone comes into your home and searches it, right, while you're there or even while you're not there and messes things up, it makes you feel bad. If someone seizes you, arrests you, right, it makes you feel bad. If someone secretly takes your saliva off a, off a Coke can that you leave behind, mm -hmm. it doesn't bother you at all. Randy, this is, given that you're the first person they're going to arrest at yeah, a right-wing takeover of the U.S. government, yeah, was, it's very proud of you. I'm, I'm very ready, proud of you. I'm ready for that. <laughs> Many states have approved the use of familial searching, which allows someone to potentially be charged with a crime because that individual's DNA is related to the actual perpetrator. I don't think it works out. It's also terrible. Well, so far, what's sitting here is not like that wrong. I mean, we're nitpicking things for fun, but this is not psychotic yet. It's, it's you know, it's, it's not really about consumer DNA testing, yes. but if, the, if we're having a conversation about but, use but of but DNA like, for forensic purposes... Yes, but I feel like this particular segment is going into the area that is oh. not accurate, because there's other steps after they find a familial match. Yes, no, I, I assume we're going to go off the rails at some point soon, because that's why we're here, but I just want to say that so far this is, generally speaking, reasonably correct minus the hyperbolic language which is you know stealing is a loaded term but that's kind of more semantic than anything else as explained in the book dna and the criminal justice system the amount of personal and private data contained in a dna specimen from which the profile is drawn makes its seizure extraordinary in both its nature and scope the dna being held by federal state and local governments can provide insights into the most personal family relationships and the most intimate workings of the human body including the likelihood of occurrences of thousands of genetic conditions and diseases dna may reveal private information such as legitimacy at birth and because genetic information pertains not only to the individual whose dna is sampled but to everyone who shares in that person's bloodline potential threats to genetic privacy posed by their collection extend well beyond the millions of people whose samples are currently on file CODIS is apparently not enough of a power grab for law enforcement. They want more. Are they going to recommend next that people wear like a special suit that's for sale so you don't shed DNA anywhere? That'd be fun. We don't wear hazmat suits? Yeah, hazmat suits everywhere. I mean... And then you can burn your hazmat suit and you're good. The end goal is a complete DNA profile of the entire nation. In 2002, Interpol created their own international DNA database. I think you are expecting way too much of these labs. I do not understand how you could even come to that conclusion when they can barely work with the samples they do have already. Interpol created their what are genealogy was so much easier if they had database. access to that database? It's like saying, what if they have all our phone numbers? Or what if they have all our addresses? Right? And well, there's also facial recognition. Well, know, the facial recognition that, is, right? is really like that. So, so like, who cares? Like, who cares? It's it's is it just feeding on par you narcissistic? Know, you know, the last paranoia. time I came into Heathrow for this conference, it took me two hours to get through. Yeah, it was fast this time. You just walk in. I walked in. I smiled, and I, you know, I yeah, went. Yeah, it's easy. Okay. okay. We like we, we like no privacy. To accomplish this dystopian nightmare, law enforcement agencies have begun to take advantage of commercial DNA testing kits. People with no criminal record have begun voluntarily giving up their DNA, legally abandoning their genetic profile and bodily autonomy. You ever read those terms of services when you get a new phone app or really anything? Yeah, probably not, right? The company behind the TOS is counting on that, and the companies behind your commercial DNA test kit are counting on that too. Based on what I put in my contracts for my clients, I guarantee you nobody's reading these TOS. The fine print on a commercial DNA testing kit generally says that your DNA results can be used against your interests. And that is so vague that it covers law enforcement demanding access to it. You might scoff and say that it's their own fault for not reading the terms of services. But unless you have read every word of every terms of services agreement in your life, maybe try to have some sympathy here. Nobody reads the terms of services, and even those who do will probably not clock that used against your interests really means that the FBI wants your blood. It's so far-fetched that no it's not something that anyone considers, but it's actually kind of true. Even if someone reads the terms of services, understands the consequences completely, and agrees to take that risk, that person's relatives probably did not agree to that, and that person's relatives are now in danger. Okay. This does not only concern the individual who gives the sample, it concerns that individual's parents, siblings, and other relatives. They did not sign up for this. Yeah. 
Hey, Bennett. As explained in The Lost no. Family, let's back up. How does this even happen? Can a local police officer just press a button and get your DNA from 23 and me? No, not exactly. These DNA testing companies all have guidelines, and they seem to fall into three categories. A company may be completely forthcoming and offer law enforcement access pretty much whenever they want. A company may be less forthcoming and offer law enforcement access purely on a case-by-case -case basis. A company may be even less forthcoming and only offer law enforcement access with a search warrant. If stuff isn't private, it actually isn't private, right? So if someone gives your phone number to someone or someone gives your name to the police, that's okay. That's not a violation of law. That's actually how police work works, right? They go and ask people questions and they get information and they solve crimes. Well, and I think whether, no matter what you sign, if the police can, if the police can get a warrant for that data or a subpoena, they're going to get it whether you agree to it or not. That's true also. It's your DNA, not your credit card information. If your credit card information is compromised, you can have it canceled and get a replacement. If your genetic information is compromised, you can't replace it. Your DNA is you forever. Even if you are not the slightest bit worried about law enforcement overreach for whatever reason, you should be aware that insurance companies may use your DNA against you even if the cops don't. They said, chat GPT, write me an essay scaring people about DNA testing. So this thing comes out and they attach it to videos that, that fit with the topic. And then you make this thing, and then you spread it and try to scare people. Well, you people. certainly, the first per person you send it to are these paranoid types yeah. who belong to these uh, these uh, blogs and vloggers, you know, who have these uh, videos yeah. that, uh, that are uh, totally paranoid and conspiratorial, right? As reported by National Public Radio, in general, long-term care insurers can indeed use genetic test results when they decide whether to offer you coverage. The Federal Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act does prohibit insurers from asking for or using your genetic information to make decisions about whether or not to sell you health insurance. Or I really could have used a summary on every one of those long quotes and an actual page citation from each of those reports. But those privacy protections don't apply to long-term care policies, life insurance, or disability insurance. If they want the information, they're going to make a condition of you <laughs> enrolling in the policy. Right. Well, the reason this is mostly just stupid is that they, and anyone could subpoena your or get a search warrant for your DNA at any time, at any place. Again, still not necessarily incorrect, but just kind of a whole lot of nothing. Let's sum up. All those DNA testing kits, not worth the risk, especially considering how little you get out of it. With rare exceptions, they are only good for creating a pie chart so that you can lie about being a living embodiment of diversity. With rare exceptions, they are only good for creating a pie chart so that you can lie about being a living embodiment of diversity. They are only good for creating a pie chart so that you can lie about being a living embodiment of diversity. With few legitimate uses what? for these DNA testing kits. So Leon Thomas has yet to really explain any real risk about the police using your DNA, other than to the extent that he's a defense attorney advising his client to avoid trying to get caught for committing a crime. He hasn't really explained why this is bad. Okay, so I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Yes. I wasn't ready for this. Can I study? Can I, can, can I, can I watch it again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not watching this again. General thought about the video is the voice is just creeping me out and I'm not quite sure who made who really made it. So if you want to be sort of conspiratorial like like the guy who or whatever made the video, you wonder what's the purpose of making a video like this and who is this guy? And in terms of the content, I think it just it's it's very um, uh, typical of the type of thing that you hear from people who have that sort of par narcissistic paranoid uh, personality disorder where they think everybody's out to get them and they need to hide from everybody uh, and that they're so important that everybody wants to know everything about them. It's just sort of typical. I've, I've run into that quite often. I didn't find it particularly persuasive to me because I'm just not that type. Well, I think the cat is already out of the bag, given the fact you have hundreds of millions of people who have already given their DNA worldwide. 
and you can anyone can be triangulating through his cousins. The second thing they don't bring up is that you cannot get any kind of health care done in this country without providing blood, blood samples and urine samples. So if the medical industry and the insurance industry wants to know everything there is to know about your health, uh, you know, I'm 69 years old, they've got basically 69 sets of blood samples and urine samples uh, during my entire adult life to draw on. So I don't think this makes, this makes a marginal difference. The police state does not need a DNA company to enforce its rules and policies and go after people. This is a lot of, to put it nicely, a lot of speaking tr half-truths and wanting to sound more important than you actually are. This was aggravatingly tedious and the lack of an original thought and instead relying on others, quite frankly, good and critical work. I've never come across this channel, I've never watched your videos, but please be less tedious. <laughs> please, I'm asking you, this put me to sleep. There are mm -hmm. some academic issues we can discuss about informed consent or whatever, but like, I don't, I don't really know what the implication here is. Like, I guess... Ultimately, if the police want your DNA, they're probably going to find a way to get it, unless you're wearing the, the body suits and burning all your trash, hoarding it in your house. <laughs> they don't need to go through these steps, and you're just going to miss out on uh, finding relatives and uh, learning about your gener genetic heritage. We For no know. real <laughs> real benefit to abstaining. Uh, if you're from a family of criminals... <laughs> I would do anything to get my family locked away for a long time. So, I mean, the insurance argument just doesn't—it doesn't fly because, again, it, it it appeals to people who think they're the only person in the world. But if you're going to exclude pre-existing conditions, you end up excluding the entire market, right, for insurance. Like the whole idea of insurance is going to sell a lot of policies. Some people are going to use them, some people aren't, right? So you need a large pool. So you start taking out anybody who might have something in 10 years, and that's everybody, then you have no pool, you're not, you don't sell any insurance. That's why the insurance companies are never going to do it. So you exclude everybody. Well, they want to make money, so they do want to sell policies. Uh, it's possible that there'll be uh, price discrimination among people who have pre-existing conditions. Uh, unless you have a pool, a company pool. I mean, certainly a company with older employees pays more in, life, in medical insurance than a company that has younger employees. I think he is technically correct, as I've said about much of this. The vast majority of people who take DNA tests are ethnicity tourists. That is an NG Bush line that I use with permission at every lecture I give. They get their pie chart, see they're 2% black, say I'm 2% black, and that's that. But that's not how any real genealogist uses DNA testing. And the ethnicity estimate is you know, maybe 10% of the value we get out of it. All the DNA companies do market the pie, ch the pie chart when it's really the ethnicity calculator as some come test your DNA and you get your, you know, you find out you're 56% Irish. Of course, you're not 56% Irish. This is a toy to make a actual scientific tool that is used and peer reviewed to make it more accessible, the language to people. And yes, most of the people who do end up taking it as like, oh, I just wanted to do that. I didn't want to do the genealogy, but there's a lot of value and it isn't in the so-called pie chart that you are alluding to, but in the genealogy. I mean, I've, I've tested with most of the um, companies, uh, 23andMe and Ancestry, Family Tree DNA, and MyHeritage, so I guess at least four of them, and I put my DNA results on other places. The reason I do it is uh, not so much to find people, but so that people could potentially find me. I'm looking for cousins, I'm doing family tree research, it's historical research, uh, trying to sort of recover the, the lost traces of my family that was strewn all over the world because of World War II and various other things. And so the more I put myself out there in terms of my family history um, and, the, and the people and also the DNA, the more likely I am to, to find people. Yeah, and I've tested with all the companies as well through my deep genealogy work. Um, I don't think that all of the autosomal results are that fascinating. Uh, because I have some understanding of my family, uh, but for people who um, are not aware of what their background might be, it's 
it's particularly useful. Uh, I know I've done a uh, IRB-based study where we looked at the autosomal results of people who had a terrible genital disease, and by using these autosomal tests with their consent, we were able to identify the communities where this disease was prevalent and identify the specific community that was preserving these diseases so that we now have a cohort of people we can use to help develop a solution. The three best uses I've heard of when I'm asked about autosomal result are adoption cases, are cold cases, and uh, Holocaust research. It's excellent for Holocaust research because it only happened 40 years ago. So uh, people can find each other who were long lost, uh, and it happens all the time. You know, I spent years and years uh, looking for cousins that were separated from my family in the Shoah. Had we done autosomal testing, uh, before we started 15 years ago, had it been available, we would have saved ourselves a lot of aggravation <laughs> because these are my uh, grandfather's nephews. So they would have shown up very closely as relatives of mine with the right surnames, and we would have instantly had that rapprochement instead of waiting 15 years. So I think finding relatives is the key. He's he's actually missing that point completely. It's really not about the not about the the concentric circles. It's about finding real living human beings. Yeah. Consumer DNA tests ultimately have nothing to do with CODIS, so to jumble it together, why? <laughs> I mean, the, the real yeah. silly part is yeah. that like these DNA tests have no chain of custody. And, you know, I, I once had a friend who did the test for her mother under her own name, which made me twitch. Every time I write a report for a client, I just think about that and I realize that everything I'm doing could just be totally wrong and then I twitch some more. I, I think as they even said, the cat is out of the bag, like, you know, the number of people who are in some of these more law enforcement friendly databases are so much smaller than the rest of the DNA pool. And even from those hundreds of thousands of people in these smaller databases, people are able to make amazing discoveries. I don't know nearly enough about the specific testing because also CODIS is quite old and has been using um, archaic tests for, uh, and there's lots of DNA samples that would not be considered usable today. As far as I understand the type of testing they're doing is looking at autosomal STRs to prove the cases which are not at all tested by popular companies such as Family Tree DNA, 23andMe, Ancestry DNA, um, and even in the whole genomic sequencing such as uh, Nebula Genomics and Dante Labs. What helps authoritarian police states is, is the population not being able to access information. So if the government has a monopoly on things, then that's bad, right? But when you talk about giving your DNA to Ancestry or MyHeritage or 23andMe or Family Tree DNA, that's not a monopoly on information. In terms of the law enforcement, it's a good tool. It's always been a tool to use fingerprints and other things that people leave behind, so why not DNA? Any final thoughts? Please stop with the half-truths. If you're going to quote somebody who's doing actually good critical work, and I can appreciate that you're bringing this to your audience, if you're going to do that, also cite the location like you would in a peer-reviewed article. Don't just read it off like that because it puts people to sleep and maybe your audience loves that. Maybe they use it for a bedtime story. Just say there's this great piece of work that can be a great reference for if you want to learn more about what some of the problems are because also you don't allude to that these authors are a lot more nuanced in how they're approaching things instead of just pulling out random bits of their text to support your argument. So please, from somebody who comes from the academic world to another, Please don't treat your audience like they're idiots. <laughs> I, I don't see the societal issue here. Like it's, you know, to the extent that these companies were to do these things, it would be a problem for us because they're breaking the rules that we agreed to. But they're implying something much more sinister that I'm not totally following. My final thought is that YouTube videos are not a place to get advice for whether you should or should not get a DNA test. <laughs> There is one YouTube video that you can watch for DNA advice. I don't know where it is or what it is, but I've been told there's one thing. And I can't read the cue card right now, but i sorry, it's just hard to... Oh, Jar Jared's, Jared's YouTube channel. Sorry, I, my, my clown tags are not here. I don't know. Clown tags? 
contacts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just like everything else that you research, find someone who has a reason that to be or authoritative. You can seek out different opinions. My sister's a geneticist, and uh, she suffered during a pregnancy with something called hyperemesis, which is this very extreme form of what they call morning sickness, but it's really worse than that, where she almost died, she lost the baby. And so she ended up studying for 20 years. She developed um, a survey that she found people, she had a few thousand people, and then she contacted 23andMe and asked them if they would add something to their surveys that they do, their health survey, to augment what she had already done. And when she added that database to hers, it became absolutely clear which uh, genetic marker was causing this. And now they're working on treatments and cures and all sorts of other things. So there's a lot of potential applications from this, and it all comes um, from the, the having this large database from 23andMe. So I'm sort of a big fan of this right now. I mean, and other people are too. But my, my sister was just in, on the cover of the New York Times for this type of research. So uh, I would not think it's a good thing to scare people off from DNA tests and this sort of paranoia. It's going to fly in some circles, but I think it's really sort of, well, as you say, the cat's already out of the bag. They're not going to, they're not going to make any real dent in it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with informed consent before people do testing, but I don't think scaremongering is the answer yeah. to that either. Yeah. If you enjoyed and you want me to have more guests doing reactions on the channel, be sure to comment below and let me know. But if you want to see another reaction that I did, be sure to check out this video right here. Thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon patrons.